And hello, ladies and gentlemen, Crypto Knights here for the third time, although you don't know it, but yes, this is my third redo of this video, but uh, I wasn't really happy the way the first two turned out. So yes, everyone, welcome. If you're new, welcome to my channel and my journeys with uh, trading bots, uh, particularly Apex Trader now. And uh, just to start off, if you do like my videos, like my content, you know, things like that, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And don't forget, too, that if you want to know when I do post these videos and, you know, on Apex Trader or, you know, eventually I do want to expand into other areas, feel free to click that subscribe button and don't forget to ring my bell. Uh, also, as a side note, please keep in mind I am not your financial advisor. I am not here to give you financial advice. This is just my journeys, my mistakes, and my successes uh, in the cryptocurrency trading market. Uh, you know, anything that I say are my views, my opinions on how I see the market, what's going on, uh, you know, how I'm learning with things, and then how I'm translating it into what turns into what my strategies are at the moment. Um, you know, I do hope to be able to part uh, some advice i hope you guys learn from my mistakes and you know i do want to share you know what knowledge i do have you know such things as setting up apex trader how i'm going about things and whatnot but keep in mind that you need to do your own research you need to look at your own sources look at multiple sources be able to form your own opinion on what you want to do and then with that said let's get right on to the goodies so um we're going to start with coin market cap uh it's a disaster in my opinion uh we are still really 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 high on bitcoin dominance we saw it touch 56 percent again and it's back down to 50 55.5 but i wouldn't be surprised uh, to see that number go up higher uh for me from what you know i've been understanding uh this is a disturbing number right here we did break the 200 billion support level in the overall market cap uh you know, it's been a strong support for, uh, you know, the market for, uh, you know, pretty much the entire summer. We have touched on it once or twice. And each time that level of support has held. But there was no support. It broke through the support in this one. So who knows? Maybe in the next 24 hours we'll see that support return. Or we might just see that drop even further. If it does drop further, don't be surprised to see uh, Bitcoin and, you know, everything else plummet down with it. So speaking on Bitcoin, last night was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, in my opinion, we had a little bit of a market manipulation. There wasn't a lot of volume. And then all of a sudden, boom, we get a green candle in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, keep in mind uh, the way that I view this is manipulation. And you can go back uh, in coin market cap and you can look at the exchanges. You just have to scroll back really far for Bitcoin. But around this time, you'll see some really big sales or buys in this case, uh, which when there's a really low volume and something is as high as Bitcoin, $6,300, you're going to push up that value if you do a number of large buys really quickly. And that's why I think what happened, this is why one minute everything was kind of sideways and normal. And then the next second, uh, things just went absolutely haywire. And then that's where, you know, those of us trading in the Ethereum pair saw a huge red and, you know, things went crazy. You know, moving over here, you know, the difference was, yeah, we saw that, you know, big red candle, but right before it and during it, uh, there was a lot of trading where here there wasn't that much trading uh, Here there was a lot of back and forth. There was a, a good push down and now we're back to sideways trading um, I don't think 64 level 6400 is going to be a strong level of support right now Hence why we so easily fell because there was nothing organic about this rise uh, You know 6200 is gonna I don't know if we're gonna be able to hold that level. We didn't before uh you know, so right now, from what I'm seeing, the market sentiment overall, we're still going to be, you know, very good possibility that we're going to see a continued push downwards towards the 6,000 or even very possibly the 5,700 level. Um, you know, and if it breaks 5,700, the next level support is around $4,000. 
don't you know be freaked out if that happens. It's not a bad thing. Um, more than likely, you know that's you know we'll, if it goes down that far, there will be a strong level of support, and you know if a lot of what I'm understanding and hearing and reading is. Uh, you know, from there, it should be a break of the bear market, and then we'll start finally seeing the bulls come back in to stay around for a while. Now, it is possible that, you know, we'll continue the trend of seeing Bitcoin at 6,000 and holding that strong level of support. If it is, then hey, that's, you know, 6,000 is definitely Bitcoin's bottom. And, you know, if we can get that strong level of support there, you know, who knows what will happen. But, uh, you know, worst case scenario, just be prepared for that downward trend. Be prepared and don't be surprised if you do see Bitcoin break down under 6,000. It's just at that point, can 5,700 hold it or not? You know, we don't know. You know, if I had a crystal ball, <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this because I'd be in Tahiti somewhere sipping on a drink in an umbrella with an umbrella in it, drinking out of a coconut. So... Um, Ethereum, uh, it's had some wild swings the past day as well. And that's really been, uh, you know, wrecking havoc with the Ethereum pairs. Uh, I want to touch on this really quick. I think this is an important thing to discuss, especially if you're new to the market. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is important for, um, for anyone who's a trader uh, to remember. Keep your emotions out of this. It's, you know, uh, you talk to any Wall Street trader and whatnot, you know, when they're doing their thing, it's, you know, with a clear head. Things go up, things go down. The cryptocurrency market is like a stick of old dynamite. It's really, really volatile. And especially, you know, if you're new, you're starting to really see this. You're seeing one minute everything's hunky dory, the next minute everything's wacky, and then the next minute everything's hunky dory. That's this market. You're going to see greens and you're going to see reds. Don't panic. Don't freak out. You're going to have good days. You're going to have days where you are in the negatives. You're going to have days where you're way up in the positives. The key is, you know, to have the right strategy to research the market, to understand the market, to keep more greens than reds. That's just what it boils down to. You know, when you see stuff like this happening and you wake up and you see nothing but reds, look at the market. You know, look at your different time charts. Um, you know, look at some technical analysis and and understand what's going on with the market. You know, your reds, they'll change. You, you got to be a little patient. Understand, especially with Ethereum, um, you know, if you're trading off of an Ethereum pair, you know, Ethereum has to settle down first, up or down, before the rest of the altcoins can recover and then continue, you know, the normal trading. So, you know, with that said, yes, you know, you might have some coins that were doing really well and suddenly pff, they're just diving deep into the red and you have other ones that, you know, recover very well. Give it some time to settle out before you make decisions on if you're going to, if you're going to do a stop loss and sell or if you're just going to hold. Give it a little time to recover. Don't freak out. You know, you're going to have your good days, your bad days. Just remember that, you know. Don't get too worried about, you know, what's going on. You know, try to look at it with a clear level head. Do a little research before you go ahead and make your decisions. Don't be afraid to ask around and ask what other people are doing. I do that all the time. So let's go into what how I've done. All right, so as I said yesterday, I started up two Ethereum bots. I'm going to leave Bitcoin alone for a while. So Venom. Uh, both Venom and Bone were doing really well until uh, that spike in the morning. So Venom's had a really up and down day. But one thing I noticed about Venom is Venom is more cautious. It's more of a cautious strategy, uh, which is good. 
you know, it, it, that's got its, its upsides to it as well. So, you know, overall performance, I think, considering the market, Venom did very well. I only had six losses in a couple of those. Um, I chose to take out myself because they were um, bags that were sitting there for more than a day, and I really don't like holding my bags for more than a day. That's a personal decision of mine. Um, what you want to do, you know, is completely up to you. Uh, you know, it's just if it's there more than a day and it's more than like one and a half percent, I don't worry about getting rid of it because, you know, at the speed that the spot moves, I'll recover. So taking a quick look, I had 87 wins, six losses with a profit of 2.9 percent. And I still have three more hours of my day to go. Um, not a bad day considering. You know, yesterday I think when I did this video I was at 130. I went up getting, you know, another 25 for 155 wins. There you go. Uh, you know, today has left me with a number of bags. Most of these are fairly recent. At one point I was down to half of what I had going on right now. My oldest ones are um, a day, close to a day. Uh, I haven't quite decided if I was going to get rid of these yet because they are low enough where I think um, they'll recover. Uh, we'll see what happens going into tomorrow. Uh, this one I'll probably definitely get rid of um, sometime in the next couple hours. But overall, Venom's done a great job considering the market. Kudos. So we're going to go on over here to Bone Comma. Bone Comma, I feel, is a bit more aggressive. Um, so, uh, you know, I've been stuck in uh, some major negative positions for, for a while now, um, but uh, it's also done a lot of good, too. So, uh, touching on here real quick, uh, Bone Comma's got me 115 wins today with 17 losses with a 2.9%. This is what killed me. So if you're using Bone Comma, I just want to give you guys a heads up. If you're using the trigger, this thing will panic sell on any major BTC jumps. Uh, whether it's a bull jump or a bear jump. Um, I haven't really looked into what it is because I, I want to take some time to look into it and maybe adjust it for something a little bit more to my taste. Uh, but that's why I have the 17 losses is uh, you know when we had that manipulation spike this morning uh, it went through and sold out of all my positions and it took me uh, took uh, bone comma probably about four hours before I was back to the break-even state so but overall both uh, bots have done really really well today I'm very happy with my results I'm not complaining I'm just kind of right now um, before, you know, like I said, the only thing I'm going to sell is just the same thing as, as on Venom, the BRD. I'm at 7.34% negative percent on this one, so that's definitely going to go bye-bye on both bots. Other than that, I just kind of want to, let's see where the market goes. Uh, you know, tomorrow is Monday, um, you know, so the traders, the main traders are going to get up at 8 o'clock, have their coffee and their donut, kiss their wife and three kids goodbye. You know, hop in their BMW, head to work, or, you know, maybe just stay in their pajamas and trade all day. But either way, uh, we'll see more activity tomorrow. So I'm just going to be really patient before I make any decisions and see how tomorrow goes. I'm just going to let the bots do the thing. I'm not going to really get out of any bags at the moment, um, except for the BRD bag. Uh, so... Uh, with all that said, um, I want to touch on virtual private server. So the other day, uh, a guy came in, um, well, I'm assuming it was a guy, uh, who had been using Crypto Hopper. He uh, was looking to switch over to or try out Apex Trader and, uh, you know, asking a lot, you know, some really good questions. Um, and, you know, he asked everyone in chat, you know, what they liked about Apex Trader, and there's a lot of answers, but the most common one was the speed of the bot. And you know, luckily, uh, ETH Miner was you know around at the time, and you know, so he was able to you know fill us all in on why we're able to.
do these trades with such speed versus Crypto Hopper, which you know I haven't used some of the other ones, um, but from my understanding, they're about the same. Um, you know, and it the the key thing that I took away from that was the virtual private server. What's a VPS? You say? Well, it's real simple. So these guys somewhere, wherever they may be. They have a server, or maybe they're running a server, who knows. Um, I don't know the details on that, you'd have to ask them. Um, but what they're doing is, so when you pay your $35 for your bot, you get a piece of that server. That server is yours, you're renting it for $35 a month. And that's the difference. Those resources are yours to use. Now granted, you know, their server still has to communicate, and I'm not sure, no, I can't, I don't know the details of the software or the bot. Um, you would have to speak to Black or ETH Miner, you know, in Discord, you know, I don't need further details. Uh, but let's say you're using Crypto Hopper, and everyone says, you know, there's a lot of lag, you know, whether you're paying for the, you know, the Kangaroo subscription or the Hopper subscription. You know, it may say it scans at, you know, the market at this time, you know, every intervals. But we all know that that's not true. It's usually a little bit longer. You know, you watch, you know, you can watch your, your trades, but it takes forever for them to update. You know, you can look at the market, you look at your trades, whereas, you know, with Apex Trader, I keep wanting to call it the Apex Predator. Um, <laughs> you guys should have called it that, just saying. Um, you know, it's, it, it's real time. Now, the... It's a two to five second delay between the actual market and what you're seeing in your bot. That's pretty damn good. And the reason why I say that, and, and whether you're new or whether you've been trading for years, you know, especially in the crypto market, things change literally by the minute, sometimes by the second. So if you have something that's scanning every two minutes, what have you missed out on? Or... Did you miss, you know, you have something that's sitting there and maybe it went up and then by the time it scans again, it's gone down and now you're in a negative and you lost that opportunity to make that sale. And this is why we're able to see, I think, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, the volume of trades that we see with this box. Excuse me for a second, I need a drink here doing these things for multiple takes I'm gonna tell you where it's on you uh, so you're not competing with other people for all the same resources at the same time and you know so my understanding is that's what makes the difference is your bots using those resources to, co to connect to your market and to keep those trades in as close to real time as possible so therefore, you're not, you know, your bot scans it and says, and and maybe, it, you know, and on you know, and something else, it scans it, but it scanned it at the tail end of the indicator. So it buys it, and by that point, it's already going down, and it's going down, and you lost that opportunity. Whereas here, with your indicators, as soon as it sees it, it pops open that buy order, if you have the funds for it, or if you have the positions open for it depending on how many positions you set for yourself. And that buy order is there. So you're catching. So that's why you're able to see sales at 3 minutes, 18 minutes, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 17, 7. So you see what I'm saying is that's like a huge, huge difference between buying something and it turns into a bag really quickly or buying something and catching it at that right moment to be able to catch the upward swing and get your profit. You know, even if it's a small profit, those small profits add up when you have 100 sales in a day. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that's, to me, personally, that's why I, am, you know, ha used it for two days and didn't even think twice about throwing my money at them. Um, because it's making the sales. It's got that speed, it's got that constant communication with that market where it's keeping me up to date. It's keeping my bot up to date, it's keeping my sales up to date, 
and it's able to make those trades. Yes, you're going to get stuck in bags. You know, all this is is algorithms. And algorithms cannot account for humans. So when you get a market manipulation, one minute, you know, all the indicators could be saying it's going up. But as soon as you get that manipulation or suddenly there's a huge change in the market for whatever reason, you know what? You're stuck with a bag. It happens. We deal with it. And we move on. But the difference is before I would be stuck in the bag and I might have to sell it and it would take forever to recover. You know. Here, 115 wins, 17 losses. That's like enough for playoffs type deal. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I still walked away today so far with a 2% profit. I can't complain. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a lot of money, so it's not like my I'm putting a lot of money into each sale. So each sale is really small, but it keeps adding up every day, and that's what I'm counting on. You know, so, you know, if 0 0.02 of Ethereum is 3 bucks, then each of my guys total just made $6. So, that's an extra position. That's an extra position for me to play with tomorrow. Or right now, you know, whatever. Um, so, when you're looking at, you know, what you want out of your bot, you, you know, to me... I want a bot that's going to be in constant communication with that market that I'm on and give me those sales. Make sure that I'm, you know, uh, what I'm paying for, you know, strategies that I'm using, you know, they're on point. And you're not going to be on point if you're, if what you're using is not constantly on that market. And because you, your bot has its own little private space with its own little set of resources, you know, you're not competing with everybody else. That's what, so you're not getting that lag that you would with other other you know uh, online bots. So that's my 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 take on that. If I missed anything or I got something wrong, please feel free to leave it in the comments. Or you want to comment about anything else I talked about, go ahead and leave your comments. If you liked what I did today, go ahead and click that like button. Let me know and. Um, you know, don't forget to hit that subscribe and ring my bell. You guys have happy tradings, and I'll talk to you all soon.